What's up? What's up? What's up? It's another Wednesday. It's time for yet another happy hour. Come on in the room and let the shade begin. Grab your cocktails. I've grabbed my good girlfriend, Tori B. What's going on, Harlem Heat? Huh. These streets is talking. I say Listen, that. <laughs> it's so messy. And um, we have so much to talk about. If there's anything that we missed, um, we will definitely be talking about it this Saturday morning um, on the morning show. And I have a special guest host with me for this Saturday. So please tune in with me then as well. But um, also, you guys, make sure that you guys will continue to like the video so that we can get out into the algorithm and more people can know about us. Make sure that you guys are subscribing to the channel if you have not. Um, make sure that you guys are commenting, sharing, doing all of the things that you're supposed to do. We come in with our homework, so there's yours, okay? And <laughs> shout out to our friends over on X, aka Twitter. Um, y'all have really held it down for us, so shout out to y'all. Uh, Tori B, Monday was a humdinger, was it not? Oh, yeah. We was on during a very pivotal time. We came on to talk about Candace, and we got a two-for-one, and we found out Robin got the acts at potomac and that was very exciting um yeah you were very excited yeah because the g the gbs <laughs> needed to be split up and they needed to be split but do you they think they got the right one i mean i we already know they're not gonna let go of giselle despite her not having a storyline in what four years um she's been at least four yeah so since um, her real boyfriend left the show. So um, I just I just don't feel like, I mean, Robin gave us something, even though she played herself and put the tea on Patreon and charged us for it. I mean, I wasn't paying for it. Um, and then I feel like Andy definitely tried to bring her back and tried to give her time to, you know, clean it up. Well, here's what I think. I, I honestly don't think that she gave us anything. Um, she didn't intend on giving us that. She didn't think that that uh, admission, that admission, excuse me, that her husband um, was cheating on her with a, a Karen Huger doppelganger, doppelganger was going to be like a big deal. And it was a big deal. She wasn't going to give us that at all. Right. And then I also think that, uh, because it's out there and the way that she chose to like handle it was ask me a question, just do what you want. And we don't have a problem and do all of this and do all of that. Yeah. She attempted to squash it instead of let that play out. We were forced to deal with Wendy versus NECA, which everybody was over. And Mia comes in and Mia gets right to it. And so before we get on with the tea, there has been some circulating news about Mia. Basically, uh, Mia stated that, well, was it Gordon or was it Mia? You take it away because you're okay. super invested. Y'all, Tori B is really going to get on Mia ass. So go ahead. Yeah. Um. So there's a number of things, right? The finale, the finale, she made it, right? It was Mia. It was the Mia show. And I will acknowledge that I am excited that she took first chair from Giselle. I will admit that. Kutos. But this is Mia B. Lion Thornton, okay? And on X, aka Twitter, um, some folks have called the attention to some of the lies she done stated that she's still lying, even in the midst of being first chair. Um, and so... I'm going to give you some of that. If you did watch which ha watch what happens live with Mia, you know, uh, Andy did try to dig deeper and it was a little bit confusing. I could see it on Andy's face because, you know, on the finale, she did. Hey, she um, she absolutely said to Gordon. Well, Gordon outed her and said, you were cheating before we even got married. Now. When she went on Watch What Happens Live, Andy asked her, so you cheated before y'all got, you had an affair before y'all before got married? And she said, no, the affair was after. But you and Gordon, you said you and Gordon went to counseling to for him to get over it on the show. Okay? Then somebody on X um, actually called out the story the storyline, because part of the storyline is she's not sure whether her son Jeremiah is her new boo, Ink, 
Ink's baby or Gordon's baby because which, by the way, bombshell shocker, fell out of my bed. Right. Um, but somebody called the attention to this season episode eleven, and if you remember, there is a scene where Giselle goes to uh, visit Necker at her new house. Sorry, this is New York. You're going to hear stuff in the background. Um, and so they're talking and, you know, Neca's on the fertility journey and they cut to a clip where Neca and Mia are talking and Mia's like, yeah, I did IUI and um, they inseminated me with the sperm and this is with Jeremiah. So how is it that Jeremiah's paternity is at question if you got inseminated with your husband's sperm? I'm very confused. Which one is it? But again, I'm saying she's caught in two lies about this storyline. And if you remember, now I'm going to bring it back. Last year, was it, it was last year her and Jacqueline were beefing, right? Right. Last year, Jacqueline called her out at the reunion for lying about the storyline that Gordon helped her get and pay for her car. And Jacqueline admitted that that was a lie. Listen, it's let me just say this, okay? I know you're on a roll, but let me just get on there here real quick because I know for a fact that, you know, Mia be lying, right? But can I tell you something? What? I don't you care. <laughs> I don't care about that. I get it, but this is Why messy. Why does it bother you that she lies so much? Don't, but don't involve your kids in your lies to, to be the star of the show. That's my point. And I really, you know, Cheating is cheating. I mean, everybody cheat. And but I agree with Gordon. You messy. I asked you not to involve the kids, and you are. Now you're involving kids in your storyline. Your son could grow up and see this on television. This is sad. And it means you'll do anything to stay relevant and to stay on TV. And that's just it. I told you I never liked this heifer. She's good TV. I'll give her that. She's good television. And she saved this season. But I'm being honest with you. This is not the way to do it. Don't use your kids for this. That's I'm, sad. And Gordon's in on it, okay? Well, maybe, so I don't feel bad for him either. Gordon. I'm sorry. Maybe she lied to Gordon about the IUI treatment and it was all along. Which one baby. is it, baby? Well, I mean, she's a liar. So if she lied to us, she definitely is lying to Gordon at the time or two. No, he in on it. Remember, he's, he was in on the other lie about him helping Jacqueline get a car. Listen, I, I, I'll be honest with you. See, the reason why I'm able to enjoy Mia is because I don't give her too much. <laughs> I don't even listen half the time. I don't. Yeah. I don't. And I, if that's a double standard, maybe. Maybe I need to look into that. Yeah, because you know, then you I can, am just thoroughly entertained. And you sorry. can't be mad at Giselle for creating lies about the husbands. But see, here's the thing, though, right? Mia creates lies about her stuff. I don't think that I've ever seen her go out and lie I, on I, another I, cast member. Yes, she did. Who? Wendy. What she gave Peter Wendy the cookie. The she said she gave Peter the cookie. She said Wendy gave Peter the cookie? Yes, yeah, she did before she assaulted her. Did Wendy give Peter the cookie? Don't do that. No, I'm asking. I'm not even... We do not believe Wendy gave that man a cookie. Stop it. I don't and he believe said, it. I'm <laughs> and he said he didn't get it. Come on. Like, it's a slippery slope. That's what you... You got to understand that. If no, you want to have you. a rule for you. one, you got to have it for all. You acting like a Giselle fan. Who? You. Who? You. Girl, child, she's... Now, wait a minute. Now, we didn't get on here for you to come <laughs> slandering. Now, you lying on me. Okay. Uh, you know, she lied like a rug, and you up here saying, Well, me and tell little lies, little white lies. I, mean, I, just, I, I don't, you, and, and it's crazy. And we're going to get to Wendy right now because we're going to start. Hot Topic starts now, baby. So while we're on Wendy, we were just going ahead and touching on Mia and everything that happened with Mia. But while we're on Wendy, right? Wendy uh, is in the news right now. Her and Teddy Mellencamp, formerly of the, the Royal Prize of Beverly Hills are going back and forth yeah. on social media. Um, and so if you guys don't know who Teddy Camp is, she is part of Two T's in a Pod with Tamara Judge. And they are currently 
uh, going um, back and forth with Wendy because they had some things to say about Wendy regarding her spot next season, and they feel like she should be paused indefinitely. So let's go ahead and listen to this because I got it. I tried to chop it up. Hey, when I get a production assistant, you will know. But until then, y'all gonna know how I'm gonna come off. Here it goes. Yeah, I I I can't help it. I'm really trying to get on board. Or just gone. Like by paused, I mean bye bye bye. Nice knowing you. I'll see you later. Uh, What's gonna happen all. with Wendy? I need her to be paused. Yeah. I, I I can't help it. I'm really trying to get on board. Or just gone. Like by paused, I mean bye. 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 Nice knowing you. I'll see you later. Uh what's all right. So that's what they said on their podcast. And um they came under fire for some of the their thoughts in regards to Wendy. Some are calling them Karen's. Some are saying that it's uh, contributing to the colorist agenda. Why are two white women advocating for a black woman to lose her job in this economy? And uh, I'm not a white woman, you know, but I have also said that I don't see a future with me, um, excuse me, with Wendy moving forward on a cast. And it's not because of the reasons that everybody else thinks. Like, you know, they were saying that she's um, boring, hard to figure out, dull, or whatever they were saying about her. I don't think so. I just don't, again, as we mentioned earlier, Tori, see them getting rid of, unfortunately, Giselle, who needs to go. And then everybody can stay, if you ask me, But they, except for Ashley and Neca. But uh, I don't see them getting rid of Giselle. And I don't want to see Wendy and Giselle on the same show. Um, Wendy did go ahead and clap back to the girls, you know, and basically posted a screenshot of her uh, DMs um, unresponded to. I don't know if y'all can see. Let me get your comment out of the way, Mademoiselle. Thank you for tuning in, Mademoiselle. Thank you for being in the room early, Asia. Thank you so much, Indigo Sage. Everybody else out on Twitter, X, and YouTube, thank y'all for tuning in. Um, but basically, this is what she had to say about it. Um, absolutely nothing. It got Nada from Wendy, and she says she knows why they're so pressed. And if you want her attention, now they've finally gotten it. And this is what um, happened. I guess Teddy's reached out multiple times over the last couple of years to get Wendy to appear on the podcast. And Wendy has paid, it, paid it absolute desert dust. Uh, Teddy did go ahead and clap back, not just too long ago, and it said, you know, for back. It was just a response. Oh, it was a clap back. back. It was a clap back. It was a clap back for, for Teddy. It was. Basically, Dry. Teddy, well, you you gonna let me get it out, Tori? What's up? Dry and clap back. Go well, let me get it out. Thank you. Uh, so Teddy went ahead and responded, saying that basically, for you to be such a renowned professor, this is the um, energy that you give back. And so, yeah, it was playing desert dust. Do you think, and everybody, you know, with your cocktails out, uh, do you guys think that this is racist, colorist? I'm gonna say this, everybody. Who knows me knows they call me Chase Luther King and I will beat down a racist block in a minute and call you out on your stuff. I don't really think this is racist. I do see how it can be viewed that way because at the end of the day, you're, you know, you're two white women and you have, there's an imbalance here, right? But I don't think that they were being racist in this moment. Okay, that's you just want me. me to be preachy. So you want me to be preachy. Okay. No, I, I mean, I don't, if I thought, if I felt like it was Asia, go on, tell them Asia. In the okay. go stage, go on, tell them. So I'm going to say this. Was, I would say so. I'm going to say this. Enlighten me. I'm not going to say racist. Okay. What I say is, um, unfortunately, she, I mean, she <laughs> has privilege. Okay. <laughs> She has white privilege. She does. Absolutely. She has white privilege. And Absolutely. as a privileged white woman, you should not be on your platform as advocating for a black woman to be fired as a white woman. I'm going to say that. I'm not going to completely say it's racist. Well, let me ask you this. As fans of a show, you watch a show. I get it. Are you not? No, I'm, I'm just, no, let me get it out. Let me ask uh -huh. the question. Are you not able as a white woman to say who you would like to leave and who you would like to stay? You should. But in this mm -hmm. instance, because she was a housewife and because um, I'm going to say this. The question I have. Yes. Are they not friends with Giselle? Both of them? 
I, I don't know. Are they? Because I don't do. I don't. Giselle is not a blip on my radar. Neither are they. I don't like them. They are. I don't like them on their own respect. Well, I don't know if Teddy is. I don't know if Ted. I don't know if Teddy is. But, but Tamara probably but is. But Tamara is. Right. So that's number one. You're already. So you think like, it's an agenda? It's a scheme that Todd set up? Right. So I'm gonna say that number two is. Guess who's going to be on their park cast shortly? Who? Wendy's nemesis, NECA. Oh. Uh, okay. So, so they being, well, they are messy. They came for Teresa Judice, and I don't play by tree. You know, I'm a tree hugger, but they are messy. So but this is what I'm saying. So you asked her, she paid you dust. Maybe you feel some type of way. Y'all friends with Giselle. You know, there's I think there's a lot in the mix. Um and I'm going to be honest. I'm pretty sure she doesn't like that uh, Garcelle called her a gnat. And that's exactly oh, what the gnat is. Oh, yeah. And I'm going to be honest with you. During the time Potomac and um, Beverly Hills was on, was airing, there was a lot of vitriol, hate, and bots talking about Wendy and Garcelle. So I am going to, I'm going to tell, and I know because I was going toe-to-toe -to -toe with them. I'm well, listen, any... I, did a, the, I did the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills panel, um, which I love, the fellas on the lean. I love it. I love our viewership over there. Um, and they know I was in the trenches fighting for Garcelle against those bots every week. Because This every is week what I'm saying, but why is it the, the black, the darker-skinned black women are constantly on attack? And it was both of them. I, it well, was I'm insane. Say, I, maybe it's ignorant. No, it is. It absolutely is. And I, that's why I'm going to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with anybody for it. Because I don't think it's fair and I don't think it's right. And the fact that it's the GIBs that's constantly going after darker-skinned women and they, they're they going to sit here and adamantly deny that they're colorists and yada, 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 yada. Absolutely are. And their fans are too. And I'm going to say it too. Well, let me just add this. I'm too. using my light skin privilege. Well, uh, speaking, well, oh, thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> when we talk about white privilege, though, and we talk about um, Teddy Mellencamp as it relates to white privilege in relation to Bravo, I think that's the one place her white privilege does not work. They pay her absolute desert dust, honey. They don't have her on any of the shows. She doesn't come around. Andy doesn't like her. She's the gnat. She is everything else. So I don't think that her opinion holds much weight. While I do think that Wendy... I don't want to see Giselle and Wendy. I would rather Giselle before Wendy. Does that make sense? Yes. No, no. I, I okay. understand that. That makes okay. perfect sense. But they did not give that kind of, right? They didn't give a good reason. They didn't give a good, well, they said that they didn't give a good it's reason. Boring. Um, they didn't give a good reason. Could you read this comment for me, please? Chase, that's my question. Is their race making it racist because they're offering their opinions like we are? Yeah, no, and that's where I draw. That's where I am currently conflicted. I don't pay attention enough for them, to them, for me to feel that way or to know or to educatedly say that. When I said what I said about Dorit, I meant it. I stood in it. We've reviewed that show for three seasons in a row. I've right. been there in the trenches. I've watched Dorit since she's been on the show. I said what I said. It's not changing about Dorit. As regards to Tamara. Right. I don't like I them. I don't crazy. like Teddy. I don't like them. Do I think they're racist? I don't know. Yeah, she called her a Karen. What I will say is, as somebody who's worked in corporate, yes, there can be white women who are very. Uh, it's it's like the microaggressions. You get what mm -hmm. I'm saying? It's more like mm -hmm. a microaggression than anything. Well, as I mean, but here's and my maybe thing. they need to have EJ well, here's on the story. Microaggressions build a racist hill and at the top of the hill is racism you cannot have microaggression in, in my opinion you cannot have microaggression without having racism and so that's why they are racial saying, undertones oh. yeah I, well I that was just saying they go hand in hand and for me you do so much so much of it you do so much the first time the did it was like okay the next time she did it was like wait a minute the third time all bets are off you are but i think you are in my opinion this is my opinion this is not a fact this is all right allegedly that you see down to the blue allegedly. allegedly right um but yeah so that's why i am with Dorit. again teddy a non-factor uh tamra yeah. is just nasty and disgusting and a monster full of trash 
with beady eyes, shout out and no attention to her. And with that being said, we're going to move right along because I've given them way too, too much, much time. time and they don't deserve it. Uh, with that being said, you guys make sure that you like and subscribe. Hey, to the people in the room. Yes, to the people in the room. <laughs> Did y'all see Antonio come up here on Monday? Baby, Antonio laid it out. That what I tell fun. you, <laughs> I'm trying to work with, you know, and, and Antonio is the highest paid at another platform. Well, was the highest paid. I don't mean to start no shade now, but he was the highest paid at another platform. Now, this is me dishing the dirt, so lean in, sorry, because I know you don't know. So Antonio was the highest paid at another platform, right? And so, because he's highest paid, and I ain't really got no money behind here, I'm trying to work out a contract, negotiate, and get him to come on and talk with us a couple of times out of the week, you know, but we're going to see what we can come up with, okay? <laughs> Anywho, let's move right along. Everybody push your titties up if you got them. Push your titties up. Push your titties out. Let's... <laughs> yeah, they really Y'all, Jasmine is in here crazy <laughs> right now. Thank y'all for rocking with us. Lord Jesus, it's a fire. Um, let's see what we got up next on the docket. Now, Tori B, that you did tell me that you are a native New Yorker, honey. So tell me what's going on. Why are the people is punching people in the face on the street? And their latest victim was one and the only, the uh, queen of the reality reckoning, Bethany Frankel. Lord, I did the people say that got Bethany Frankel face? punched her. Yes, they did. Oh, they Jeff. punched Bethany Frankel right in the face in the middle of the street in New York City. <sighs> According to page six, um, an assist deleted comment on a TikTok video a uh, fashion design student, Michaela, sharing her experience being assaulted. Frankel revealed she was randomly punched on a Manhattan street earlier this year, too. This is insane, she says, because this happened to me a few months ago, but I was embarrassed to say. Uh, the former Royal Housewives of New York City star shares on this past Tuesday, I was on the Upper West Side, insane as I was taking a photo of a bakery, excuse me, a video of a bakery. Now, is it me? Now, I know that they said it's an epidemic going around on the streets of New York City where people are randomly getting punched. But is it me? You know what I'm saying? Or do you think that was somebody from NBC who did it? The people say it was Carol Razzlewell, allegedly. Stop. Um, Have you been punched? Are they punching you? No, honey, child. We don't We don't play that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I spray people with Lysol. And it's funny because Mace is... because It's cause, because Mace is illegal in New York. So it's pepper spray. Oh. So I could take Lysol in any <laughs> place, okay? Um, but here's the thing. There mm -hmm. is a lot of homelessness like it is in California. And the mental health crisis is a thing. And um, I remember that younger lady, this is probably who, who she commented on, because the girl had a knot on her head. And I was like, Jesus Christ. It right? like a devil horn. Yeah. All right. So she commented on that one. Yeah. The thing is, in New York, there's so many people walking. If you don't walk fast enough, if you are looking at your phone, you could be checked. Elbow mm -hmm. check. People walk right in. I'm one of them. I'm telling you. You don't watch where you're going. I'm not going to punch you in your face, though. But I might graze you. Because how tall are you? Five, two. So then you do it. They got a like, big well, hey, personality. They don't never look down. They just be looking around. The problem is you cannot walk on a street, a crowded street, and not pay attention. People always be looking on their phone. Shit, they cross the street not looking. So a lot of times what she was saying was she wasn't, the girl said she wasn't looking. So what happened was somebody said <laughs> somebody. Decked her. Yeah. Yeah. But Bethany said that she got decked too, and there's like 25 cases being reported uh it's happening more in the street so. yeah it's happening more often i'm telling you what it is it's was it nbc simple. bravo who allegedly punched uh, bethany what you say simple say give it they might have paid a, a homeless day. person to do it i don't think somebody oh. <laughs> <laughs> Stop. all right okay but it is poor happening bethany. Yeah, poor Bethany. I like poor Bethany oh do y'all feel bad for bethany oh let me know if you feel bad for bethany uh go ahead and put a broken heart emoji in the in the comment section if you don't care go ahead and throw a drink throw, show me what you're drinking in the comment section y'all uh oh, oh poor bethany oh <laughs> uh you guys and uh let's move right along while we are talking about these world housewives there's just so much on the docket today uh and we're getting the little stories out of the way first uh so as you guys know Larsa and Marcus Jordan have broken up yet again. And if you guys saw 
the morning show I did a couple of weeks ago with Wellington from the Reality Rundown. Um, you know what I thought about Medea and Larsa breaking up and who? <laughs> Top <laughs> I hate you. Ciao. <laughs> <sighs> Boy. Okay. So, Larsa is currently picking up the pieces of her life after breaking up with uh, Michael Jordan Jr. and uh, her longtime boyfriend. And uh, Tyler Perry did not want to hear it. He is hitting back at Larsa with a scathing Instagram post. Um, I can't read that. Tori B, I don't know if you can read it. It's a little. Um, you want me to read Larsa? Or read everything, Charlie. I just, I'm okay. over here gagging. Larsa Pippen says, time away from Marcus Jordan gave her the clarity and helped her realize he's not my guy. Pippen appeared on Monday, Separation Anxiety with Larsa Pippen episode of the Amy and TJ podcast. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Not them. Not the disgraced Amy and TJ. Okay. Um, so here it is. Marcus replies. I wasn't born last night. I see that in the corner. And then he writes, rewriting history for clout is not cute. With the emoji, the sad emoji. Funny how people change just to be part of a conversation that's irrelevant. Face palm emoji, shrug emoji. Dad, he couldn't get the color people emoji. Uh, we'll go some <laughs> listen and i just wanted to talk about this really quickly because i said it on that show and i'm going to say it again um marcus jordan um allegedly in my opinion is one of the biggest users um out there he dated user and a loser child you have user and a loser marcus jordan a because i've never won a trophy room raffle so I've never gotten my Jordans or Nikes or anything that I've tried to get from you guys because y'all allegedly backdoor your shoes. Allegedly, I don't know if that's true or not. I just know I've never gotten a pair. A and B because you uh, people have heard me say this, but I'm gonna say it again. You dated this woman who is the ex-wife of your father's like most famous basketball team, famous basketball lineup and they hate each other's guts you dated them her excuse me you dated her right and then the new season starts rolling oh i want nothing to do with this i don't want to be on camera that's larsa's thing not my thing i'm just here to support and to the next season you're filming every season with her i mean every scene with her you're doing podcasts with her now you're on the traders with her you used her, and once you realized that we don't give a damn about her neither, you threw her to the curb. And for that, Alex Cross, you, <laughs> I was going to say something else. For that, Alex Cross, I'm done with you. We're done. This is probably the last mention of Marcus Jordan on this particular platform. Tori B, um, I would love to know what you think, but I don't want to give it more time. Do you have something that you think about this? Not he just pissed me. Remember what he said at the reunion? Um, oh, when he was talking about oh, women. they couldn't I, I wash like dishes, kinda... they couldn't. He's talking about the women on the cast when they was going at Larsa, they couldn't wash dishes. In my I opinion, felt like that. My house. You know what I felt like that was racist. Yeah, now that I felt was suspect because on a cast full of all types of that? Latin women. All types of women, you know, we have Haitian women, Cuban women, uh, Hispanic women, white women, you know, but, uh, you know, I just thought that that was super low bra, especially when the stereotypes of their nationalities and backgrounds and races. I want to know if he ever apologized, because I think the only one that actually, I think Gertie might have addressed him. And I know, um, um, what's her name? <sighs> the other one addressed him, too. <laughs> Um, what's her name? Um, I don't know who you're talking about. The tennis player's wife. Um, oh, Julia Limgovia. Ju Julia, well, Julia can't really address anyone when she's uh, married to a transphobe. So I had no idea. Allegedly, we're gonna move right on. Um, yeah, we're just gonna <laughs> <laughs> because if Marcus Jordan is not getting on my nerves, y'all, can I please tell y'all who is wearing me low? Wear me low, child. Is it the Wear same person I'm thinking of? 
Uh, I don't know. The Gubadias. Say it, it'd be wrong. So, <laughs> who is it? The Gubadias. Oh my God, the Gubadias are killing me. <laughs> it's gonna kill me to even have to talk about them because it seems like every other day it's something else that I don't care about. Like I thought that you had met your happily ever after, Portia, and now oh, it seemed like a match made in hell as opposed to heaven. So the Gubadias have been all over the news lately. Oh my goodness. And if it's not one thing, you guys, it's another. Hey, y'all. Hey, Chris. Hey, Lord, TKC in the room, child. Now, I know that you don't know, uh, Tori, who TKC is, but you will get to know him, okay? Okay. So, so I'm up, right? Uh, the Guabadias are all over the news. Uh, Portia um, got locked out of the house, child. This has been a mess. Portia got locked out of the house. I don't know. We're going to go ahead and pull up the reports, and you guys tell me what to think. <sighs> Uh, Tori B, could you go ahead and read this for us, please? Um, Sorry, everything's in the way. Comment. Yeah, I know. I'm going to get it. In documents obtained by Radar Online, the motion states that media attention surrounded Simon's citizenship and past made a contribution. The document state wife shows that the news of reports of husband's alleged immigration fraud and what appeared to be an imminent threat of deportation were shocking and affected wife's mental and emotional well-being. None of this information was ever disclosed by husband to wife, despite wife having previously inquired about husband's immigration status and criminal history. Okay, I don't believe that second. bullshit. I got one more part for you to read while I'm doing that, I'm pulling that up. I also open up the phone lines because I want to let our um, Yeah, we want to hear what y'all got to say. Cause yeah, this on this way. one, because I am zonked out. I don't even care because I'm going to tell y'all what the streets in the air are saying, allegedly. And <laughs> I want to know what y'all think. But uh, here's the other part, Tori. I hope she protected Pilar's social security number. Um, oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's read the second so part, girl. <laughs> It's also being reported that there were text messages between Portia and Simon that were dis that were they discussed matter. Mm. Portia's lawyer also wrote, since learning of husband's checkered immigration history and status, wife began to question everything she initially believed to be true as it relates to her husband's character, immigration, business dealings, etc., and began to uncover additional information that husband failed to disclose to wife. Petitioner did not wish to remain married to a stranger and filed for divorce. I just want to say before we get started, who y'all going to torture me for the justice for Fallon? Yep. And I said oh. that in the comments sometime. I said, let me tell you, I said, here's the lesson here. If a man treats the previous woman like S-H-I-T, leave that man alone. That is a red flag. Stop thinking that it can't happen to you. Now y'all know why Fallon cheated. <laughs> <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> or is it, I don't know what's alleged and what's not with this whole thing. All I know is, uh, Portia, you just could have came in and told the girls, we your girls, Portia, we your girls. You could have told us, y'all don't get too involved in this. Calm down. I'm here for a good time, not a long time. Do you really, do you think, honestly, do you honestly think that she did not know about this? Honestly? Because the streets of the A are allegedly saying that this is fake. This whole thing is fake. And it is a way to exonerate P. Willie, Peach Juice, from going down with Simon Wabadia. That's what the streets of the, of the A are allegedly saying. I don't know what to believe because I don't care. But uh, what do you think? You know, do you think, you think she knew? This is hard. Um, what I do, I don't think she, she knew him for five minutes. I don't think she did her due diligence. Okay. You don't just marry a stranger. She been married before. Um, and the fact is, remember, Fallon said that Simon knew uh, that uh, Portia used to mess with her, his cousin. Remember that? Remember that was that was the African that allegedly bought. I mean, Simon's cousin was the, the African, African that, that Claudia was talking about. That bought that Rolls Royce. So both of them is dead ass wrong. 
I, the way I look at it, he been a messy queen. Look how he was dragging Fallon before they got married. It's just all too much. And I don't, I don't feel sorry for Portia because you too old for this. Just get back with Dennis and you'll be all right. Do you think that Dennis is the first? I don't know if he's a messy he queen. Said he said he wanted son. Um, but do you think Dennis is the love of her life? I don't think he have enough coin now. He's broke? Well, he's working with No, 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 no. I'm not saying he's broke. But he don't got salmon money. Yeah. <laughs> well, isn't he, a, isn't he working with Fallon? I didn't hear about that one. You in the A, you tell uh, He me. did something. Um, Fallon was at his studio or something. They did like some business together where she was promoting his um, cognac liquor, his cognac line that he had. So they're working together, child. I don't know what's going on. Hey, Sean. Hey, Chels. Hey, to the people. We're talking about Portia. I don't really care. Um, William But the people, I'm, let me go ahead and get y'all. Okay. Let me give, give it to y'all. I'm going to just tell y'all what I think. I think... Um, God, I've been laying and filleting Portia for years at this point. Um, have I not, Torby? I ain't never really been a fan of Portia because mm -hmm. everything that she blamed Kenya for do, she does. Uh, every hole that in the book that Kenya was supposed to be, she may allegedly be herself. Um, and uh, I just think that it's quite convenient now that she's back on The Real Housewives of Atlanta that, like... I, I don't know. It just something about it is off that she is so moved to chorus to get away from this man once his dealings get public. Normally, if you're in love with a person, you may be upset with that person. You may need a break from that person. But do you just cut it off cold turkey? I, I, I feel like the emotions had to have been cut off a lot longer before the decision was made. And so because the because of the way that it's spilling out into the public and you know people being allegedly locked out of homes and um cars being regifted to other girls like he did the carter fallon just like a lot of mess has been going down if you may have possibly made this decision that you don't want to be with this man before it came out and all of his stuff his stuff hit the fan y'all ain't been together that long to make that decision so What's well, up? allegedly he was cheating. You forgot he was out with Nene and a new chick. Um, but they, I guess, she had, but that was after. But that was after no, she filed for the divorce. So I don't think that's cheating, in my opinion. I feel like if you married and somebody files for divorce and you go on a date, that's not cheating. No, they said he was cheating. Remember when she went to Dubai? Apparently, he had another chick out there, and that's why she went out there. Well, remember a long yeah, time ago, women. Um, he went to Africa without her, like right after they got married. He went to Africa without her and she pulled up in Africa. Do you remember that? But that's because he has multiple women. Let's be real here. Like, I'm not, and maybe she didn't know that, you know, like, but this is what I'm saying. This is why you don't marry somebody in 25 days. <laughs> they were talking a lot longer than 25 days, in my opinion. Sean, you know what I mean. On, give me one second. Sean, is Sean there? Sean, what do you think? What I was, uh, let me mute this. Um, I thought she just wrote, he just leaked some text messages talking about, I don't know you. You don't make me feel safe. You didn't know him from the beginning, but you married him after what, a, a few months? And I think Portia is getting what she deserved. My, my thinking is when you get in a relationship, you watch that person. On mad day, see how they act towards other people. Because then you'll know what's going to happen to you. So she's seen him on mad day. And he she's seen him drag Fallon and um, Jalen through the dirt. What makes you think you were so special that it wouldn't happen to you? She's getting what she deserves. Payback. Oh now, Sean... Yes. I know that you have tough skin and thick skin. Don't people gonna attack you in them comments? You know that, right? I don't care. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> she was she was underhanded. 
and tried to steal something she thought that was a prize, but it wasn't a prize. It was fool's gold, and she got food. Mm -hmm. So now she's going to have to go through all this. It's going to be like Kim and Croy, go through all that stuff, the police and all this leaking stuff. He's going to do the same thing he did to Fallon to her. I agree. Wow. I agree. He's doing it now. He's dragging her through the. How you gonna lock me out of my house? That in our prenuptial agreement says that you got to get out if we split. What's that about? And why you got to come with an armed security guard? So you know something ain't right. Wait, who came with an armed security guard, Sean? He she did. They That's had to break the in to get through the house. He said. She said. He flew off to Dubai, Dubai and changed the locks. So she went there with a security guard. An armed security guard to get her stuff. Mm -hmm. Lord Jesus. Lord. And this he said she dismantled the uh cameras. Yeah, it's a messy situation. It's all messy. Both of them is messy as hell. Is the black version of Kim and Croy. Yeah, he said he said it was a gunman. And I was like, what the hell? What she be? He he, <laughs> and come to find out it was an armed security guard that went with her. Did he not have a gun? Was he a man? No, yeah, but that. <laughs> but he was joking. security. It was that's like different. A shooter. He came in like she, she contracted somebody to shoot him. That's what it sounded like at first. But did y'all uh, see the interview with Apollo? I know that you wanted to talk about it. And I was going to mention that we were going to definitely deep dive into it on Saturday morning's morning show. But since you're up here, Sean, um, what did you think of the interview? Phaedra knew what he was from the beginning. She knew he was in he was in them streets and she still married him anyway. Allegedly. Uh, allegedly my foot. She knew because she helped him with his first case. She knew what he was doing. <laughs> so what does that say about Phaedra? That she just likes fine men? I guess she was digmatized. I mean, have you seen him? He is fine. But I seen him on the other show with his new wife. He is not a nice person. He think that woman is stupid and needs to listen to him for everything. That she ain't got a mind of her own. But she and now, sorry. And now that he was cheating, he he been doing a whole bunch of interviews. Well, I I did see the the ring camera footage, and so what did he? I know uh, Carlos asked him about that. What did he say about the ring camera footage? Because that was insane that he was on a ring camera, booed up, watching Netflix, bringing food over to the girl and all this kind of stuff, and it got out. Like, did he a cop to it? Did he admit that he was cheating This is how he Sarah? explained it away. He said that was a friend. <laughs> it was an emotional affair. They never slept together. He a damn lie. They slept. So his wife, he was cheating before. She didn't find him cheating before. But this is what she's really upset with now. He said he got caught with this lady and she told it was emotional and blah, 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 blah. So he stopped talking to her. Then she said, he said they were still going through some issues. So he started back talking to this lady again, but she had a man, a husband, I believe. And the husband took her phone one day and seen all the text messages that they had between each other and decided to look on the ring camera on her phone and seen him sitting on the couch. That's how the stuff got leaked because who, whoever her man was leaked it. But he's claiming that that was old relationship back in January. It's not current. Well, I mean, it's just March, so that's current. Yeah. yeah that, that, it's just March. We're going on <laughs> April, but that, it ain't, you know, come on, dog. I'm sorry, his wife March. is stupid. Why you, why then, you have somebody in jail? Like, like what are you, what, like, you watch TV. You think he he was nice to Phaedra? Come on. Let's stop it. Women got to stop. She picked up her daughter and followed him from every state that he went to, to New Jersey, to Kansas, or whatever the other, Kentucky. Mm -hmm. Why would you follow a felon? And, oh, this is what he said about Phaedra. Once he got caught, Phaedra and him stopped talking. They were still living together, communicating. So that's how he ran back into his new wife <laughs> and started talking to her because she was supportive and she she poured into me. I'm like, oh, my God. But then that's when he went through Phaedra's phone and found out Mr. Chocolate. So he was like, forget it. I'm going to just go over here with Shireen. 
and uh it's the same pattern all over again you just used it on your next wife exactly and we as women you got to hold yourself accountable you are, you saw who he was stop thinking that because you a new woman it ain't gonna happen to you stupid is as stupid does so i don't feel bad for shireen either now before i let you go um i want to know what he had to say about kenya moore that now because let me tell you something King oh. <laughs> let me fix my earring he said he was real friendly. She was cool. They was competitive, blah, blah, blah. He tried to explain away him picking her up, throwing her in the pool. He knew that was dead wrong. He said at the reunion, when Kenya said, uh, you need to tell your man to stop texting me. He said, all best was off because you started it. So he made it up and said what he said about what he, the, his you know, and uh, he ran with it. He was like, you want to start something? We can start something. So Carlos is the one that made him apologize to her on film. Can I tell so you? So that was his excuse. Can I tell you? Because, Sean, you like to, like, watch reality TV shows and find me and stuff. I am there that night. I was there the night he told her. And um, I'm on camera. So if you want to go back to season seven, episode one, and find me, I'm there. And I was there, so. <laughs> You got a question about that night? I might be able to answer it. Look, I need to go back and look at it, D. <laughs> I, I, I was there, and uh, uh, they were definitely her, uh, her being Kenya and Claudia were locked in the bathroom forever, and they had the pee girl. Oh my God, they had these bathroom girl. And they was not <laughs> in the bathroom forever, and then they had us. So we couldn't get into the bathroom, and then the restroom. Excuse me. Then we couldn't get outside because they was filming Apollo and the reaction and this and that. We were trapped inside bar one, and I almost wet myself in the bar. And so to make up for it, Peter had to buy everybody around the drinks. And I was like, well, I can hold it. Then. Let me go on over there and give me a cocktail, child. <laughs> but you had to pee, but you wanted more drinks. But what I was supposed to turn out a free drink, would you? <laughs> yes, because I, I don't to, drink. You know how those drinks were at bar one? <laughs> no. <laughs> expensive, child. Bar one by Big as the Closet, my ass drinks. All right, Sean, we're going to go ahead and get into the rest of the show. Thank you for coming. All right, in. talk to you later. You. Uh, Let me tell you something, Sean. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. All right. She know what I mean when I say thank you. She know what I mean when I say thank you. Who is this? Hey, Casey. All right. Thank you. Hey, all right, all right, all right. So we're wrapping out the show, and there's something that I forgot to tell Tori B about that we must address, darling, before we move on, darling. Hey. And that is, has she by Sheree lost her? She by Sheree? Oh, she lost her goddamn mind. She been lost. Her oh, mind. we gonna take the Lord's name in vain on this channel. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Because we do, but I love the Lord. Now, that's sorry, Lord. Name. You know what I mean. See, she she made me lose my religion. Come on. Oh, are you drinking today? Yeah, I am. Okay, well, we gonna have to cut back on that. <laughs> um, nobody's paying two forty five for none of them pieces. That let's is wait and see. Paying. You can you can keep that. I'm not paying that. Y'all look at the price point of these clothes for what she's putting out this season. Tacky. Are y'all buying the She Buy Sheree? Did anybody get their first She Buy Sheree merchandise for the first time? Not 350. <laughs> 350, Tori. Now we're in the middle of a recession. And she thinks she's she not a celebrity. You a Z-list celebrity, sweetheart. Ain't I nobody... Jay-Z ain't even selling no sweatsuits for three fifty. Jay-Z selling clothes? Yeah, Rock Nation. Yeah, he got clothes. Child, we talking about Jay-Z. They Jay -Z. all sell merch. They all we, sell merch. We talking about Jay-Z. We talking about Sheree right now. Let me tell you something. We're going to get back to you, Sheree, but let's go ahead and talk about it. I wasn't going to talk about it because everybody in their mother has talked about it. It's been mean to death. It has been talked about to death. It has been, you know, ad nauseum. Now, it's allegedly, and this is Beyonce week, so we're not running down nobody. You know what I'm saying? But Diddy did get his door kicked in, in on Monday. A couple of his doors kicked in on Monday. That's not alleged. We saw it happen. And now the people are saying that Jay-Z, they coming for him next. Tori B, this has nothing to do with our reality roundup that we're doing right now on Happy Hour, but you mentioned Jay-Z. You from Brooklyn. You from the Bronx. You from Dead Side. Do a, do a bed style. You from Harlem. You from, you know, uh, you from Jamaica, Queens, the Bronx, and all of that, you know. What are the streets saying? Are the people saying, really, do they feel like Jay-Z is next? Because, no. 
as a Jay-Z fan, there are some questionable things. Oh. All right, let's let's be real. Oh. Um oh. I mean, he was was in competition with his own own business partner over Leah, right? Um I don't know if that's true. That's what we got allegedly down here. I don't know if that's true. That is true. Oh, I don't know if that's true. That came know. from Dame, but okay. I don't know. I'll run along. How old was I mean, I mean, uh, how old was Beyonce when they started dating? I don't know. Allegedly was when she was underage. So I don't know. Oh no. Oh, 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 okay. Oh, oh no. Okay. Um. So. Oh Lord, Sean says. Oh God. So I, you know, I will just let the mind wonder. I'm not gonna get up on here talking about Jay Z. Y'all ain't gonna get me cut up. You okay. like, I don't have nothing to do with it. I'm, I, like, I'm just saying that. Talk, part. Uh uh. You know what? Uh, Tori B is on a bottle of Riesling, bobbling like a bobblehead. Like I don't know my damn. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. She is uh, impaired under the influence. And I'm not. Right I'm, I'm in my right mind. <laughs> no, girl, I, you better say you're not. Uh, right. <laughs> Lord Jesus. But who is not in their right mind is she by Sheree with them damn prices. Will you be getting she by Sheree? Let me know. I got to know. Will you be getting she by Sheree? You mean she and by Sheree? Well, it's $350 and I ain't never seen nothing on that. I never even bought stuff. That told she got to so. gotta mark it up to make a profit. But who buying this crap? Because I'm not. I don't know. Somebody's buying it. Uh, let's go ahead and move on to the last couple of topics for the day. And then we're going to go ahead and see y'all later. Alligator, as a wild crocodile. What last time you heard that? <laughs> I don't Hold on, dog. I brought it up. All right. <laughs> uh, so the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills has been in the press lately uh, after Anne Marie was ceremoniously ousted, and I don't say unceremoniously, I say ceremoniously because I threw a party when they fired that hoe. Anyway, um, so she's no longer here, uh, so we'll post that group right now because we don't know who's next, but allegedly their last season without Lisa Renna was the highest rated Housewives series since season six of The Real Housewives of Atlanta. When we're talking about season six, we're talking about the, the core season six group, the core group that we know to have been those girls on The Real Housewives. Nene, um, Kenya, Portia, Phaedra, Candy, and Cynthia Bailey, that group. So they are the second highest rated since then. And it's crazy to me because I feel like The Real Housewives in New Jersey at the time were also pulling in four million a week as well. So the fact that they, I guess, are out beating them yes. is crazy. And they gave us little to nothing. And so do you think that when we talk about the Red Housewives of Beverly Hills, like there's a double standard amongst other Housewives shows, like Mia had to pop a vein and they didn't even break a million viewers live this past Sunday. But these girls show up and, you know, they give, they give what they give and they get a million plus. It is the hot show. It is the water cooler talk of the Housewives franchise, but do they deserve what they're getting? What do you think, Tori B? Do, do, do they deserve it? It's, it really is comparing I, I'm going to say apples to oranges for a reason. Okay? Okay. And I'm going to say they give wealth. Beverly Hills gives wealthy, wealthy. Right? These are wives. I mean, Crystal, whether you like her or not, is married to who? <laughs> <laughs> her last name is Minkoff, <laughs> right? Kyle is a Richards or, or and Hilton adjacent and so on and so forth. Garcelle is a Garcelle, and I was going to go to Garcelle next. Well, I was going to say Garcelle is a bad dresser. Can you stop? No, Garcelle can, yes, I can take it. I can is, is a black actress who was on very great shows regardless. Um, EJ is EJ. Right. Um, but she, you know, she was married to one of the most famous lawyers in Beverly Hills. Right. Sutton married into money, whatever it is. You know, these women give wealth. They have multiple houses. Right. We see this with Kyle all the time. Um, and so and Sutton as well. And then even Garcelle, you know, bought a property on a beach. So what I'm saying to you is. They're giving wealth 
and and while we're we're begging for Bravo to send uh Potomac on a international trip, you know, it's given that Beverly Hills is going on an international trip all the time. So it, it really is apples to oranges. You're not gonna get a whole bunch of reads. You'll you could get a few one-liners here and there, right? Sutton gave Name us them. <laughs> Name them. Name them. And um, Garcella give you one. You know, she gave Teddy the nickname called a Nat. You know, um, you're gonna, you're getting, honestly, it's very different. And I think, you know, they're very aspirational casts. I will leave it at that, right? That's something to aspire to. Not to say that Potomac is not something to aspire to, it's just not at the same level as Beverly Hills. Um, and so you got to understand that their budgets are bigger. Their trips are bigger. It is bigger <laughs> period. And honestly, they have the audience, the audience. I'm pretty sure more white folks tune into Beverly Hills than say a Potomac, but Beverly Hills has both the black and, and white and multi, you know, all, all types of people watch Beverly Hills versus, maybe uh, all black cast. So that's the difference. And that's why there's more money put into their seasons. Shit. Um, Miami, it's the same thing with Miami. But I want all housewives to give this. I'm so sick and tired of watching um, the the Potomac girls go play chicken shit bingo. I don't want to see that ever again. When I think of Royal Housewives, you know, I know people didn't really care for the etiquette season. I did. Before we found that they were broken, all their kitchens had um, white appliances and was from, you know, dilapidated and from yesteryear. I was all in because it was a wealth. We saw a, a, what we thought was going to be a version of wealth. We saw the Real Housewives of Atlanta. The very first scene on the Real Housewives of Atlanta is Deshaun Snow moving into her mega mansion and hiring her staff. You know what I mean? And that sets the tone for what I want. And everybody doesn't have to be there. And eventually, over the years, the Atlanta girls got there because Bravo paid them to get them there. You know what I mean? And they're there now. But I just, I feel that Atlanta has the season that Atlanta had, right, this past season. Everybody hated it for the most part. Everybody hated Atlanta last season. They didn't like the group. They didn't like the cast. And so now we're getting this revamp. Beverly Hills can go ahead and give not even a fraction of what the Atlanta girls gave last season and get the riches and the spoils for it. And I just think that for me, I don't think that it's deserved in my opinion. I don't think they deserve what they get. I don't think that they deserve the praise, the accolades, any of this. I don't think they deserve the ratings. And it's not a, a well, maybe it is. I don't know. I don't. I didn't scratch on that surface, but I feel like I'm starting to scratch the surface on that. Um, however, I just don't feel like the the accolades and the acclaim meet the output. You know, and don't get me wrong. I'm not saying I want Lisa Renna back because I don't. Lord knows that I don't. I don't want Lisa Renna. I enjoyed this season. It was cool. It was a different change of pace. It's a perfect reset season to build upon. Um, but the highest rated since. Season six of Atlanta, does that, does that mean it was rated higher than season seven and Puerto Rico and all of that and the, the beauties versus the beasts and the group divide? Does it mean it was rated higher than season nine of The Real Housewives of Atlanta, which was like one of the best? People give season six a lot, but I actually think season nine was better, in my opinion. My opinion, for my household, you know? Um, but you, we're talking about some really strong seasons and this is the show that comes out and does it. Like, I just don't think it's deserved, in my opinion. And, you know, sometimes you, um, you know, we like to say apples and oranges. But in my opinion, we eat them both. Cash. Yes. That's true. That's true. I, I got to eat an apple. I got to eat an orange, honey. But cash, the, audi so. the audience is different. That's why they get more. Well, I will say this, and I did say it about um, mm -hmm. the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills audience. And we've seen it now with Miami they watch the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills and they don't watch anything else. This is and what that's I'm why saying. I say it's pop yeah. culture. It's um, water cooler. Like, you know, you don't want to be left out of the conversation at work when people are talking about the Beverly Hills girls, you know. Oh, but, uh, we didn't mention. Uh -huh. Did you hear rumblings that they supposed to be um, 
shaking up the cast for Miami? Well, we were going to get into Miami because there's a report that came out as well with that report stating that Miami is experiencing their highest rated season, um, not live viewers, of course, but over the course of the days that they count, it's the highest rated season that they've ever had. And they're cutting girls and allegedly 30 is up for chopping. Why are we getting rid of the cast? We don't need a cast shake up. We don't they need a cast shake up. Put it back they on TikTok and us along. They gave better than everybody. I was I, I was tuned into Miami. Actually, they actually did a disservice to Miami. Remember, they they moved the time of the reunion. They they aired it one day after another. I didn't even know that. Right? They aired it on Wednesday and Thursday to make room for EJ special, which nobody freaking asked for, and messed that up because I had no idea they was doing part two the next day. Um, so that's on Bravo. I feel like they really messed them up by moving their time slot and not really letting viewers know that they moved their time slot. You shouldn't have moved it. Let EJ do another night. She didn't need to be on on a Wednesday night. Well, it is what it is. Married to Medicine has also experienced their highest rated season in quite some time. We're going to go ahead and let our caller up. Yes, let our call up, and then we're going to give what we call the final sip, which is our final thoughts of this happy hour. Hey, caller, go ahead and introduce yourself and tell us what you're thinking. <laughs> hey, guys, can you hear me? Yeah. Sure can. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Chase, I love you, dude. Like, you're effing hilarious. Like, I found you from the lean, and I came over, oh. and I've been trying to catch up on the videos. Oh. Is it Tori? Yes, Tori. Tori, I'm trying to catch up to you. You're a beautiful girl. Like Chase, I just I'm just coming to tell you that you are freaking hilarious. Like, um, there are so many people that are gonna agree with me. So we can move <laughs> Thank on. Thank you. Oh my god. Um, wait a minute. No. Okay. All right. Go ahead. <laughs> yes. 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 I now, just wait, finished I, watching. Before you get started, I want to say, um, you know, this isn't done in competition with anybody. This is done in conjunction with everybody. And so uh, for you to come over here as well, I really do appreciate that. This has long been a dream of mine. I've just been too chicken to do it because I didn't think anybody would come and watch. Um, and to hear you say that, to see the people in the chat, to see you know people supporting all over the place. I am getting overwhelmed with emotion because I've been doing this for 20 years since I was in high school and I ain't had no business doing it. You know what I mean? So it means a lot to me. So thank you. No, thank you. I. No, I give you all the flowers because, and, and everyone else on the lean team, like that's where I found you from. And I, I don't, I'm, I'm so sorry. I would give you a really big hug. Like you're great. I'm in grad school right now. So it really like, I love watching you guys and just listening to your topics. I found you guys with, of course, reviewing Bravo from the lean team. Um, I've tried to call in and reach you to tell you how funny you are. So I'm just glad that you have your own channel and people can still tune in to see you. So um know that there's people out there i'm from california i don't know where you're from but I'm in atlanta and i'm in, in atlanta and yeah like, yes yes so like you guys are three hours ahead of me so like i just get happy when i can tune in live um and there's also like other callers that i like their opinions um like there's this girl named kai i think she, i think i've seen her in the chat if she's if you're there kai like Girl, you talk hella fast, I talk hella fast, I hear what you say, I agree with like a lot of things that you say. So I just wanted to say that, but, and I wanted to just kind of chime in. I chimed, I got to the live when you guys were talking about Portia and Simon. Mm -hmm. um, I think Simon's a scammer, he seems kind of like scammerish. Always came off that way with Fallon, obviously. And Portia, like she's no good either. Well, she's pretty and I just hate when pretty women, like this ain't no good, you know, like just ain't no good. She's very gold, dig gold digging, kind of like Mia. Like <laughs> Mia's very, you know, gold, gold digger vibes. But, um, and I'm kind of disappointed because I feel like Housewives of Atlanta, I feel like, I feel like the drama is going to be all portrayed on Portia and that's all we're really going to get. Like the other girls, I really don't know. I'm a Nene fan. Um, Amen. Don't be nice to me, y'all. Be nice. I know. No, no, we, we love Nene. Like, no, 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 we love Nelanithia. Don't don't get it twisted. <laughs> I love Nene. I'm mad at her for shooting herself in the foot. Like I get what she's done. I understand that. I get that for the people who are not Nene fans. But like, she's never gonna come back. Blah blah blah. But I wish that she would. I wish that her and Andy would come to terms because Nene brings the views. Like I don't care what anyone says. 
she does. And during the time when it was flopping, she was losing her husband. So let's give her grace on that, you know. Um, and then Real Housewives of Miami, I agree with you guys. Put them on Peacock so we can watch it there. It was better on Peacock. Um, some people just didn't know about it on Bravo and they weren't advertising them like they should have been. Right. They didn't put them on the second for their second reunion. They put Erica on yeah. whatever it was, whatever were her, her thing was, was terrible. And they put her, they put them on like the next day on Peacock. And then for their third finale, they put them on Thursday. Like, I don't know. I think they just kind of set them up for failure, but I was happy to see that they were most watched because they're fire. Right, I agree with that. I I was one of those people who didn't know they moved it to Thursday. I was like, "What's going on here?" I'm so mad. Chase, come back. I I'm, I'm here, smile. y'all. I'm sorry. Right his tip. Do you got a cry angle? Oh my god, no. I, and here's the here's the tea about those cry angles. I think she'd be like, "Poke her stuff," and I had to make her cry. But what up? Anyway. <laughs> I'm so I'm happy. Sorry, I'm sorry. I'm here. I apologize. Doing, keep, keep doing your thing. After this, after this live, I'm going to tune back into. Um, I was watching your bold, bold and bougie. I got to watch the last episode. So. <laughs> I, I want to apologize for that review, y'all. I was so angry. Normally, Jasmine um, from the Lean, uh, my good sister, my good friend. You know, I don't like to say the friend word, but my friend Jasmine. <laughs> uh, we do that show together, and I was so angry and so passionate. I don't even know if I was able to string a coherent sentence together. So if y'all watch that. Just know I was coming from an emotional, angry place, and I will do better this coming review, and hopefully Jasmine will be there with me because she's my co-anchor and co-host on that particular show. But thank y'all for watching Bad and Bougie. I think that I'm doing, you know, we're doing Summer House, we're doing Bad and Bougie, and um, when it comes to shows like Summer House, Bad and Bougie, uh, me and Asia, who's in the room, we did... Uh, it's Bold and Bougie. <laughs> Bad Did bougie. I say bad and bougie? I no, don't... I say bad and bougie. Oh. Bad and bougie. Oh, we do bad and bougie, right? You know. Um, and me and Asia, we do. We did the. What is that Carlos King show on? on um, with the girls from Jackson, Mississippi, Bell Collective. Oh, Bell, we do Bell, Bell Collective. Bell, 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 Bell. And the reason why I like to also, I do like Beverly Hills and you know Mar Married to Medicine, the bigger shows. But I like to put a spotlight on the smaller shows because they have stories too. And nine times out of ten, they're more compelling. Then the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, to be yeah. honest with you. Okay, and so then we got to do Love and Marriage Huntsville when it come back. Oh, got to do marriage. Got to do Love and Marriage Huntsville. Or I, I actually, I, I don't. I haven't watched that, so I'm lying. But um, well, I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> Love and Marriage is a different beast, and they that fan base is crazy. I don't need nobody <laughs> trying to cut my tires and slip my tires out. Well, thank you, you for calling. And can I tell you something? Um, yeah. You don't know how you poured into me today, so thank you. Oh, you Chase. are so welcome, Chase. I love you. Just oh my keep God, being don't do funny. This, huh? Be yourself. <laughs> keep doing your reads. Like when you try not to cuss, but you can't help it. You just let it out. You just let it flow. Be yourself. Even the video with you and Jazz, you know, I, I appreciated that you guys were on a agree to disagree terms and a voice of opinion. So it was all good in that video. Like it was still good. I still liked and loved. So I'll be trying to do that. I'm always watching. So, you know, I'll be trying to call in more. So Tori. <laughs> Thank hey, you. I hope you guys have a good rest of your week. You too. Thank you thank so you much. So we much. will. We will. Okay. Thank you. Bye, um, you guys, I thank you so much. Wow, that was wow. Okay, that was more than I bargained for. I don't know, you know, listen. So let me go ahead and show you. We're not sponsored yet, but it is no chaser TV. So it would definitely make sense for us to have like a liquor sponsorship, right? Before we introduce this liquor game that we're gonna play with you guys next week called Zipper Shade. So make sure you bring your drinks with you, okay? Um, I was doing wine last week, but this week, and I was uh, out of wine. And so I said, well, I just drank what's in the bottom of this thing. And uh, I don't know what this is. It's like, a, it's called Crown Royal. And so I'm a, I'm a tequila girl. I don't drink. Y'all know I love my margaritas. You know I love my margaritas, Tori B. And I was drinking this with some Sprite and Lord, she got up here talking and saying some things that I had been thinking, but never really said. And uh, so we won't be drinking this no more, OK? <laughs> That's out. It um, made you emotional. It did, because I it did. You know, it just did. I don't really talk about on this platform what it means to me. But when I say thank you, and I take 10 minutes to start the review because I'm, you know, shouting everybody out. I'm thanking them for last week and thanking them for next week. That's why I do it because, 
you know, I've always been the kind of girl, a person that is just like afraid to do anything because, you know, they say build it and they will come, but you're building it and you're in there by yourself. And you're like, well, I guess I'll talk to myself. I don't know. You know what I mean? So it just, it just means a lot to me. But it's anywho, okay. It's okay. Yeah. Yeah. And I want to thank passion. Passion. you. You know, I've done, you know, we haven't been, we haven't really worked together, you guys, in years. I think um, the clubhouse went down, well, not down, but the clubhouse group kind of ceased activity in around 2021. Yeah. Yeah. And, but we still kept in contact and I knew that she would be great. And I'm always an advocate for people because the one thing I wanted to do um, was be seen, you know, and I felt like people had platforms and y'all don't know how many doors I have not done. That's why I'm most of them. Y'all know how many and doors I'm not done. TKC you know? said, TKC said now chains. <laughs> All right, TKC, I'm going to stop. But if y'all know how many doors I'm not done, you would know why I just was like, girl, let me go ahead and just build my own house, child, I guess, whatever, you know. And let's and just so, say this. Yeah. Everybody from Clubhouse has been so supportive and they I have. support them. And there's been times I've been on their platform because I know Wellington has invited me to do some stuff with the reality rundown as well. So there's no like competition, there's a lane for everybody in this, right? And so, you know, if anybody's out there having a dream, it's a lane for you, even if your friends are doing it. We all was on the clubhouse room together, and everybody got their own stuff. So, you know, you better go somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> uh, DJ is going to be my guest with me this Saturday on the morning show, and so I'm excited to have her there. When I tell you, DJ is beat, honey. DJ is beat, 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 beat. Thank you, DJ. Right. <laughs> beat, said... beat, 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 So I can't wait to have her on. Um, yeah, but the final sip. So I won't be drinking. That brown no more, because I don't know what the hell that was. I'm sorry, y'all. We won't be drinking the brown no more. Uh, but the final sip um, in regards to everything that we discussed today, I um, want to say that happy hour is where we come and we talk about, you know, everything. And if it breaks, we're going to come on. If it, it could be lunchtime, we're going to talk. It could be morning show, we're going to talk like we did this past Monday. It could be happy hour, and we're going to talk. That's why I love Tori B, because she's so flexible and so willing to be there when things break. Um, but um, happy hour is when we get back. We deep compress. We get these cocktails. We just talk it out. Wait, uh, we what got the, a message. Wait, what message? What was that? Let the girl with the glasses on. <laughs> Oh, wait, I didn't see. Oh, Lord. Oh, boy. Let me go ahead. Oh, Lord. Not you a cry, Marlo, baby. Marlo, ooh, <laughs> oh, yes. Not you a cry, baby. <laughs> oh, wow. my God. She's been waiting. To, uh, she has been trying to get me to do this for years, and it never happened. So Yes, Chase. I love you. This is great. I'm so oh, proud of you. Hell, I just wanted to say that everybody get their flowers before you can't give them no more. And, you know... We are very close friends, and I love uh, you. Stop telling people that. He doesn't even want to. He, you know, have you ever just been a side friend to somebody? I'm his side friend. But anyway, Chase, I just wanted to say Team Porsche and uh, Sheree and her, as I coined it, Wrinkle Couture, is worth $5. So, um. That's really all I have to say. I just want to say I'm very proud of you. I'm going to end it wherever I'm at. I'm going to drop whatever I can to come on here. Somebody said that me and you are like Oprah and Gail. And of course, <laughs> I'm Oprah. So anyway, <laughs> I love you. <laughs> I love you. Thank oh you to the chat. Thank you who watched but Bad and Bougie, Bold and Bougie, whatever the hell it is. And um, we're Team Porsche, this week too, right? Team Nini, Team Candice, bye. We're going to be there this week, right, Jasmine? On yes, forum. I am, honey. Let me go on ahead and catch up. Um, I, you know, I did. I think I dodged the bullet for not coming on there with Tamika. You did, you baby. You would have rolled me out. I did you a favor, yeah. You did, honey, because I was going to agree yeah. with you, but I still, it you know bad. how you got the double back, yeah. It so, was bad. But, uh, <laughs> Tori, I, I love you too, honey. You're doing really great. You're a great fit. And hopefully we'll, we can work together. So. Y'all will work together, though. We just got to get, you know, listen. Hey. When I tell you, um, <laughs> everybody, the people know you, this is a star. Tori is a star. Asia's a star. Antonio's a star. Sammy's a star. Danny's a star. All of the stars, child. I want Cortez is a star. All the stars, I'm trying to get them to come on and work it out, you know, but they schedules, child. They're just so busy. Beep, 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 Honey, beep, bold and bougie over here. So. <laughs> 
Yeah. <sighs> yes, honey. Myrtle is out. Love you. Bye. Thank you, Myrtle. I'm not <laughs> calling her Myrtle. That's stupid. Y'all might want to say, but why he didn't say, I love you back? I don't like saying the L word. I don't really like to get emotional. So the fact that I was up here like, who crying the last 15 minutes? It will be edited out. So if you saw it, enjoy <laughs> no, it. Don't it do that. Not be here. Vulnerability is good for the brand. It won't be here. Um, but yeah, so we're going to move forward. <laughs> Unless something else breaks between now and Saturday morning that's like imperative for us to talk about, we will see you next Wednesday um, at, for happy hour. We'll see you next Monday. So make sure you guys are tuning in on Monday for uh, Summer House, Martha's Vineyard. Their ratings were actually not the greatest. Um, and so we want to be a, a vessel and a platform to get the word out, to get people watching it because content like that, that is not housewives related for black people on bravo is slim to none so yeah. we have to support those shows so there could be more because there's stars all over the place and you never know tori b might be on a different show or whoever you know what i mean but it opens doors we have to support them we have to watch him so we have to get the word out so we will be here this season me tori b uh jay who you guys met which is that thing now child jay oh lord jesus Jay, uh, then Asia, who's in the group chat, uh, will be here with us, and uh, Chad as well. So um, we'll be up here talking about Martha's Vineyard, Bold and Bougie, me and Jasmine. Um, I did post in the community section because we got that a lot quicker than I thought. Do you guys want to talk about buying Beverly Hills? I'm watching it. It's a lot going on. It's a lot of mess. There's a lot of tea. So do you guys want to talk about uh, uh, buying Beverly Hills? Go to the community session. Let us know, and we'll do uh, buying Beverly buying Beverly Hills reviews. Um, and uh, and tell we'll Chase to review um, Love and Marriage Huntsville. How about that? Um, we'll That's see. That's my we're show. Gonna <laughs> we're gonna pray on it. I just ooh 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 ooh. They, you know, I love the Carlos King Cinematic Universe, but Love and Marriage Huntsville is a show. That is like the. Uh, it's good though. <laughs> it's tea. It's a song that never ends though, child. Oh. True. That's a year long show. True. Yes. It, it, it's, a, it's a marquee show though. It's a big. It's a marquee love show. Love and <laughs> Can I tell y'all something before we go? We're going to go and thank y'all for rocking. We just have been talking now. Sean want me to review everything. Sean want me to do Love and Marriage DC. We're doing Summer House because Sean was like, do Summer House. We're going to do Summer House. Uh, Someone right, asked me to do Power Book Ghost. I mean, I watch it, but <laughs> we gotta. I I I rock with y'all, so thank you. I almost said the L word. Oh, I rock with y'all. Thank y'all for you know. You know what? I love y'all. Now take this one, and you're gonna have to stretch it out to next March 27th. But you make that work. You heard me say it. <laughs> um, and uh, thank y'all for tuning in. <sighs> make sure that you guys. I think Nisha said that she wanted to super chat, but she couldn't. And a couple other people said they couldn't. We are like only three weeks into the channel. You do have to have like, I think at least 1,000 subscribers or 3,000 watch hours. We've only been here for three weeks. So um, thank like, y'all because we could use the money. We could use the money, but uh, just keep liking the, the, the content subscribing to the channel, commenting. turning your notification bells on, commenting, and uh, we're going to do everything in our power to get there um, so that, yeah, we can all have fun. But send until it to then, your friends, send it to your auntie, your cousins, let them like and subscribe. Somebody said, let work low, let work low. I'll be quiet. <laughs> I didn't know, I'm sorry. I didn't see that. It's funny. Okay. Now, Chase. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see any of that. All right, y'all. Um, well, thank you so much for tuning in. Um, run this back a couple of times in your sleep or something. Do something, child. Help <laughs> out. I don't got to be in pride. Jeez. All right. And uh, we will see you this Saturday with me and Deidre for the morning show. Um, with that being said, Tamara and Teddy, keep y'all mouths off black woman business. And that's what I got to say about that. Period. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.